Greetings and welcome to this week's worship for the Feast of the Transfiguration here in the week of Valentine's Day, the week of February 14th. We hope, as you'll hear in the sermon, we hope that Transfiguration doesn't overshadow Valentine's Day for you, but uh, as you might be able to tell, things are a little different this week. We are not able to be at the church, so we are piecing together a, a service so that we can all be safe through this icy weather, but we, we want to continue to listen to where we are called to go on this Transfiguration Sunday. We pray that we will be changed on this day, but what a blessing to have you worshiping with us this morning. Blessings. with you and also with you let us pray oh god who before the passion of your only begotten son revealed his glory upon the mountain grant us that we beholding by faith and light of his countenance may be strengthened to bear our cross and to be changed into his likeness from glory to glory through jesus christ our lord who lives and reigns with you in the holy spirit one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from 2 Kings, chapter 2, verses 1 through 12. Now when the Lord was about to take Elijah up to heaven by a whirlwind, Elijah and Elisha were on their way from Gilgal. Elijah said to Elisha, Stay here, for the Lord has sent me as far as Bethel. But Elisha said, as the Lord lives, and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So they went down to Bethel. The company of prophets who were in Bethel came out to Elisha and said to him, Do you know what to, that today the Lord will take your master away from you? And he said, Yes, I know. Keep silent. Elijah said to him, Elisha, stay here, for the Lord has sent me to Jericho. But he said, as the Lord lives, and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So they came to Jericho. 
the company of prophets who were at Jericho drew near to Elisha and said to him, Do you know that today the Lord will take your master away from you? And he answered, Yes, I know. Be silent. Then Elijah said to him, Stay here, for the Lord has sent me to the Jordan. But he said, As the Lord lives, and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So the two of them went on. Fifty men of the company of prophets also went, and stood at some distance from them, as they were both standing by the Jordan. Then Elijah took the mantle and rolled it up, and struck the water. The water was parted to one side and to the other, until the two of them crossed on dry ground. When they had crossed, Elijah said to Elisha, Tell me what I may do for you before I am taken from you. Elisha said, Please let me inherit a double share of your spirit. He responded, You have asked a hard thing, yet if you see me as I am being taken away from you, it will be granted you. If not, it will not. As they continued walking and talking, a chariot of fire and horses of fire separated the two of them, and Elijah ascended in a whirlwind into heaven. Elisha kept watching and crying out, Father, Father, the chariots of Israel and its horsemen. But when he could no longer see him, he grasped his own clothes and tore them in two pieces. He picked up the mantle of Elijah that had fallen from him and went back and stood on the bank of the Jordan. He took the mantle of Elijah that had fallen from him and struck the water, saying, Where is the Lord, the God of Elijah? When he had struck the water, the water was parted to one side and to the other, and Elisha went over. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
A reading from the Gospel according to Mark. After six days, Jesus took with him Peter and James and John and led them up a high mountain apart by themselves. And he was transfigured before them, and his clothes became dazzling white, such as no one on earth could bleach them. And there appeared to them Elijah and Moses, who were talking with Jesus. And Peter said to Jesus, Rabbi, it is good for us to be here. Let us make three dwellings, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He did not know what to say, for they were terrified. And then a cloud overshadowed them, and from the cloud there came a voice. This is my son, the beloved. Listen to him. Suddenly, when they looked around, they saw no one with them anymore, but only Jesus. As they were coming down the mountain, he ordered them to tell no one about what they had seen until after the Son of Man had been raised from the dead. The word of the Lord. Heavenly Father, take our minds and think with them. Take our lips and speak through them. But take our hearts and set them on fire with love for thee. Amen. Transfiguration. Transfiguration, transformation, metamorphosis. A lot of change. And wow, this Sunday has comes at a time when a lot has changed. And at the same time, it feels sometimes like not much has changed at all. Sometimes it feels like every day is Blur's Day. And at the same time, yes, everything has changed. Even in these strange times, even in these strained times, God is still forming us. God is still shaping us. God is leading us. And yes, God is changing us. And today, today, I want to remind everyone that it is also Valentine's Day. That's why I started off the very beginning of the service, because I know that it can easily get overshadowed with all of the chaos swirling around Transfiguration Sunday. Everyone running around in dazzling white clothes. The store shelves are empty with bleach because everyone is trying to be as bright as they can on Transfiguration Sunday. Now, now I had that, that hindsight, that clarity in the hindsight of why there was a run of bleach last year, just about this time. But I want to make sure, I want to make sure that Valentine's Day does not get lost in all of the hubbub of Transfiguration Sunday. So what is it? What is all this hubbub about? Today we get to witness. We get to witness and we get to experience the glorification of Jesus. We get to celebrate on this final Sunday of Epiphany, the knowledge and awareness of who Jesus really is. In all of his brightness, we see Jesus as being the light of the world. But we also get to get a glimpse. We get to get a glimpse of his glory, his glory that will be coming. But it is this moment, it is this moment this transformation in this moment when everything shifts, when what was is in the past and what is to be lies ahead of us. In this moment, we call back to the prophets. We call back to all of those who have come before us. We call all the way back in this gospel reading, all the way back to Elijah, all the way back to Moses. Just like in our own church and in our own lives, we remember all of those who have come before us, all of those who have laid the foundation so that we can be, so that we can celebrate, so that we can worship together. But we are also called back to Jesus's own baptism. Once again, we hear the voice of God in today's reading. And today it says, listen, this is my son, my beloved. Listen to him. And today we are called back to our own baptisms where we were all marked as Christ's own forever. 
So here we are, here we are up on this mountaintop and it is so beautiful. It is so holy. It is so amazing that we might just want to remain up here. We might want to stay up here because it's so nice. And we heard this, Peter got so excited that he wanted to set up camp. He wanted to pitch tents. He was ready to move in. But at the same time, you'll notice that a lot of the reasons why he was doing this is because they were terrified. They were terrified of what they had seen. They had terrified about what they had experienced. Now, have we ever had mountaintop experiences like this? Mountaintop moments when everything in our lives just feel right, where we can feel the presence of God, when we feel that deep connection to God through creation. For me, I can think about watching the sunset over the Gulf of Mexico and, oh, yes. I will be honest and tell you that many times I have had the desire to pitch my tent there and to set up my sunglass ministry. Selling sunglasses on the beach would be a good thing right there. But as followers of Jesus, we're being called to go forward. We're not being called to stay up on the mountain. We're being called to come down the mountain or from the sand dune and to go and to do the work that we are being called to do. Today, today we get this glimpse of the glory of God and it feeds us. It refocuses us. It restores us and reminds us that yes, there is still work to do. It is at this moment that Jesus, Peter, James, and John begin their journey down the mountain and towards Jerusalem, towards the passion of Jesus, towards his glorification and the resurrection of Jesus. It is this glimpse of what is coming that I want to focus on today. We have Jesus foretelling of his passion when he and all of his glory will rise on the third day. But what is this? What is this glory? In Greek, the word that is used is doxa. And we might recognize this when we think about the doxology. And the Greek word is translated from the Hebrew word kavod. Peter, James, and John saw Jesus' glory. They saw Jesus' kavod. Yes, Kavod's main definitions are glory, respect, honor, and majesty. But Kavod can also mean importance, weight, deference, or heaviness. Here we are on the verge of entering Lent where we wait for that weight. We wait for that heaviness. We wait to see the glory of God. But Jesus doesn't make us wait. Jesus gives us that glimpse of his glory today. As I dug deeper into Kavod, into the word, I could not help but to feel how much this world really needs, how much we really need this glory to come and to bless our lives, to bless our lives while we are continuing to live in these very challenging days, these very heavy days in weighted days. But it is not just about the glory. It's not about our glory. It's not about our fame. It's not about our being recognized or known by the multitudes. Instead, it is that innate humane desire to be known and to be loved. It is the peace, the joy, the restoration that we feel when we realize that we are known by God. We get to be swallowed up in that kavod. We get to be swallowed up in that glory. This is the glory that we get to experience today because I will tell you, our lives are full. Our lives are amazing. And yes, our lives can be very, very complex. And we have been through some dark times. We have experienced some very difficult times. And as we try to make our way forward, 
as we try to make our way through the wilderness, as we try to make our way through the darkness, we begin this Lenten journey coming up on this Ash Wednesday. But the kavod, the brightness, the glory of God shines in the darkness because God knows you. God knows each of you. And on this Valentine's Day, God wants you to know that you are beloved. And back up on the mountain, back up on the mountain, I want you to notice something. They do not go back down the Galilean side of the mountain. They are not going back to the way things were. They are going forward in their ministries. This was true for them, and this is true for us today. And when we begin to be able to come out of our safety cocoons, when we are able to be going forward, we will not be going back to the way things were. We'll be going forward, following the light of Christ and following that light, that kavod, and allowing it to shine through us. My brothers and sisters, we still have some very dark days ahead of us. But as we begin to get that glimpse, as we get to begin to see the light at the end of the tunnel, as more and more people receive the COVID vaccine, as we prepare to enter our new normals, as we continue to listen to how we are being called to be the light. Yes, to be the light even while we are waiting. As we continue in our journeys from darkness and into God's marvelous light, we will be able to celebrate together, to celebrate our new Easter, our own resurrection, our own restoration. I want you to hear this. All things are made new through Christ. And that includes you today. I beseech you to allow the light of Christ to flow through you, to allow it to flow through ourselves and allow ourselves to be vessels of the kavod, to be vessels of God's light, God's glory, to let that shine through us and to let the light and the love of Christ cast out the darkness in this world. Amen.
Let us reaffirm our faith and pray together the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray on this Feast of Epiphany. Open our hearts that we may carry the light and to the world, holy God, hear our prayer. Strengthen those who work for peace and justice in the nation and around the world, especially for the leaders of this country and the leaders all around the world. Holy God, hear our prayer. Oh God, Christ came as a shining light in the darkness. Bring comfort to all who suffered in the sadness of the world especially those we now name, either silently or aloud. We pray for those on our parish prayer list, for Pete, Dawn, Carl, Elaine and Larry, Flossie, Victoria, Tim, Donna and Pierre, Danny, Richard, Herb, Donna, Bill, Billy, Joan, Barbara, Carolyn, Darian, Ann, Meredith, Lee, Angie, John, Bill and Kara, Jim and Terry, and Teresa and Teresa. We also pray for the repose of the souls of the Reverend Richard Downing, son-in-law of Chuck Steinecke and the husband of the Reverend Patty Steinecke Downing, who was raised up into the priesthood out of St. Philip's. We also pray for the repose of the soul of Betty Jo Patton, the wife of Kathy McCautry's cousin. We pray for the souls of the more than 471,000 people who have died from COVID in the United States and for those who have died around the world we pray for their families, that they will all be surrounded by and supported by the love of God. Holy God, hear our prayers. O oh God of earth and heavenly peace, may the light that dawns upon us kindle our hearts and awaken our hope that we may shine forth in your glory in Christ's name. Amen. Let us now pray the words that our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, taught us to pray. Praying. 
our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. What we do and what we choose changes us. Who we love transforms us. How we create remakes us. Where we live reshapes us. So in all of our choosing, O oh God, make us wise. In all of our loving, O oh Christ, make us bold. In all of our creating, O oh Spirit, give us the courage in all of our living that we may become whole. In the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you this day and all of the days of your life. Amen. Alleluia, alleluia. Let us go forth to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. God bless you and have a wonderful week.